I have here a fresh install of Linux Mint 22. Now, right after an install, it's great. It, it works wonderfully. But there are quite a few things that I like to tweak to make it even better and more usable. So let me show you 10 things that I do after a fresh install of Linux Mint. So number one, I always turn on the firewall. So you go here to the start menu, type in firewall, firewall configuration. It's going to ask you for your password. So right here, you want to turn this on where it says status. Hit that X and it'll turn on. Now what this does is see, it says incoming deny, outgoing allow. So basically it's allowing me to go out to the internet, but it denies anything coming in. So nobody can come into your computer and mess with it. That's the first thing I do. So the second one has to do with desktop layout. It's more aesthetics than anything else, but I right click on the desktop and go to customize. And you'll notice here it says auto arrange. Now I don't like auto arrange because it, you can't move the icons where you want to on the desktop and that just frustrates me. So if I turn off auto arrange, I can move these icons anywhere I want. Um, if you like them to just line up and always be you know, sorted and whatnot, then you, know, you can keep that on, but I don't like that. And then here where it says desktop settings, I'm gonna click that. And then now you'll know, now I have two monitors. So I want to be able to move the desktop icons across monitors. Uh, right here where it says show desktop icons on primary monitor only, I don't want to do that. I want it on all monitors. And that allows me to move them back and forth. Now the desktop icons that show, right now you'll notice that it's only mounted drives are showing. These two drives right here are mounted drives. But I want computer, and I want home to show, and I want trash to show. I don't need network to show. I always do that from the file manager. But I want those all to show. And now I've got computer, home, and trash on the desktop. So the next one has to do with file management tweaks. If I go to my home folder, for instance, uh, it shows just folders, right? I don't like to see folders. I like to change it to list view. Now you'll see right here there's a button that says list. The reason why I like the list view is because I like to see the size, the type, and the date modified. Now this is fine and dandy. I can go up and hit list and so the next time I open this I'll get a list view. But if I open up any other folders, for instance computer, you'll see it goes back to icon. So it remembers that I want this folder in a list view but I want it to be global across the whole system. So what I do is I go up to edit preferences and right here where under views it says view new folders using and I change that to list view and then I go over here to behavior and under behavior uh, I want to click on a files name twice to rename it in other words uh, I have let's say I have a, a document here right and so if I want to double click on it two clicks to, to change the name, I can't. Watch this, if I click on a file name twice, rename it, and I go back over here to click twice, I can change it. So uh, just turn that on if you want to do that. And then down here it says executable text files. Now if you create a text file and you want to open it just by clicking on it, uh, it will ask you if you want to run it or view it. So what I do is I just turn on view executable text files when they're open. That way it just it opens. I don't know why this setting it, it reverts to, I mean it defaults to ask each time. That's just, I don't know why, but that just seems kind of strange. So I make sure I turn that on. And then over here in the display section, I don't make any changes here right away. And then I go to list columns. Now this uh, is only if you're using the list view. For instance, let me move these. Let me move these side by side here, and you'll notice uh, over on the right it says name, size, type, date modified. Now I can add anything to the top list here. If I go to uh, date created, it will add it over here. You'll see it added date created. I can turn that on or off. See. Now if I'm using icon view, of course I can't see that information, and so this uh, this section here only applies to list view. And then I go over here to toolbar. Now on toolbar, this has to do with the top here. See where it says underneath here. Let me move this to the side here. Let's close that. 
uh, where you have the back and forward, you have the up button, and then you have these over to the right. Well, you can add things to it if you want to. For instance, if I wanted to add the home button, I just click on home, and there it is right there. Uh, if I want to go new folder, computer, whatnot, I can turn those on and off right here. And the next one here is context menus. What this is, this is your right mouse button. And then you, you click anywhere in a folder and you'll get uh, lists come up. So I can add things to this list. For instance, one thing that does not come up here is make link. I use this all the time. So here if I go make link, then what happens is if I click on a file, I'll get the make link uh, option right here. Whereas if I didn't have it before, turn that off and I'll show you. See, the, let me go back here. Uh, you'll notice that make link is not in here. So I use that quite a bit. So I like to turn that on. Uh, you can hit copy to move to and whatnot, but um, I usually don't. I don't usually use that. So, so that's pretty much it for the uh, file manager tweaks. So the next thing I do is I change the time and date settings. Now down on the bottom in the tray here, you'll notice it says 11:46. Now if I just put my mouse over it, it'll say, of course, Thursday, August 1st. But I don't want that. I want it to show here, and also that is displaying the 24-hour. Uh, military time and I don't use the 24-hour time so what now it the common sense would say that if I right click on it and then I go configure that I can make changes to that however if you do that what comes up here is just uh, your display for your calendar now down here it says use a custom date format now I can change the custom date format and you'll see it says Thursday August you know first but I don't do it there because then you have to go messing with all these uh, you know special numbers and letters and whatnot so I don't change it here what you do is you just left click on the time and then left click on time and date settings and this is where I make the changes now I don't use the 24 hour clock so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to display the date right here and there you'll see it says Thursday August 1st I don't display the seconds and then I can change the first day of the week if I want to uh, that would be Sunday now the next one has to do with screensaver and power settings I don't want my monitor to go to screensaver I don't want it to go to sleep so what I do you go to the start button and type in screensaver right there and then what I do is I just turn this off display before starting the screensaver I change that to never and then the next thing I do is I go to power settings. I go back to the start and type in power and then you go to power management and in here turn off the screen when inactive for I turn that completely off I never want it to go to sleep because I don't I don't walk away from my computer for hours on end anyways but if you do and you want this the, the screen saver to come on or you want it to power off uh, you know power the monitor or whatever then go ahead and just leave those as default so the next one might seem kind of strange but it's just something about when I open up a, a new folder it always seems to open like up in a corner here or down here who knows where it opens I like it to open up right in the center all of my folders I like them right there and that may seem like kind of a, a, a strange thing but it just bugs me when they just decide to arbitrarily open up anywhere so what I do is I go to the start menu and I type in window and then you'll see where it says Windows click on that and then you'll notice here the tabs on top click on behavior and right here where it says location of newly opened windows it says automatic I want that to be right in the center so when I open up a folder now you'll notice it goes right to the center now the next one I did is a video all its own on this and that is I want my external drives or or secondary drives to auto mount on startup now I have two internal drives here uh, not counting my NVMe drive so they're called storage and backup and I want those to mount every time I start the computer so what I do is I go to uh, start menu type in disks and this brings up a list of my disks uh, now I've got two of them here you'll notice right here uh, I want these to, to auto mount on startup so I click on the I click on the drive I want and then I click on the gears and I go to edit mount options turn this where it says user session defaults turn that off and leave on mount at system startup and show in user interface and then down here where it says identify click on the label here where it says storage or whatever yours is called and when you do that their mount point is going to be MNT 
and then the name of the drive and then click OK and then it'll ask for the password and there you go so this will mount every time I start the computer so number eight is a biggie for me uh, I want to add media information to my context menu in other words now here's a video this is my last video the Thunderbolt solar review and it, there's nowhere that I can look at its information so if I right click on this and I left click properties you'll notice here it doesn't give me much at all it just gives me the data I created it modified permissions open with emblems it's all basically junk as far as I'm concerned I want to know the size of that video uh, the frame rate things like that I get nothing here and this is always a big frustration for me I don't know why they have not done this yet and this is here we are version 22 and we still don't get media information so I'm gonna add media information to the properties here so I go to my browser and I go to the location here github.com slash Linux hyphen man slash Nemo slash me I'll just put this link in the description below but anyways you're, you're gonna come up here to Nemo media info tab and right here the newest one it's a few years old but it still works perfectly fine uh, it's Nemo Media Info Tab 1.0.4 all deb. So that's a Debian file. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download that. And then it puts it here in my downloads folder. So I'm going to double click on it. And it requires the installation of five packages. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit install package. Ask for my password. and there we go it's all installed now this is going to require me to restart my computer so after restarting I right click on the video left click properties and you'll notice a new tab right here it says media info and it gives me everything I need a format uh, codec file size duration bitrate frame rate uh, the size 1920 by 1080 this is all the information that I need for those files still don't know why <laughs> Linux hasn't done it but that would be very helpful if they would uh, add that feature now number nine might seem strange to a lot of people but whenever I'm in a folder here um, I like to right click in the folder and left click on refresh uh, I, I I use it all the time now of course up here on the menu I could add the refresh button I can go here to edit preferences we were in here before and go to toolbar and then add it right here hit refresh so whenever I'm in a folder I can just go all the way up here and hit refresh and I could but to me it's just simpler just to right click it's less mount, mouse movement so I right click hit refresh and I want to add it to this context menu now it's there's nowhere in here that you can actually add this because you have the um, context menus here and nowhere is there a refresh in here I would like them to add it but they don't have it so I have to add my own so to add it to the right click context menu I go to my file system and then user share and then down to Nemo and then there's a folder called actions I open that up so in here I'm gonna right click in the folder and open as root and then it opens up a new window which here's another thing too I don't know why it opens in folder view or you know icon view it should open up in list view but I don't know uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a text file in here so I'm gonna create new document and I'm gonna call it refresh dot Nemo dot or oh wait underscore action right there so now I've created an action called refresh I'm gonna open up that new file and in the new file I'm gonna put all this information right here now I'll put this information uh, in the in the description below so you don't have to pause it and, and look at it I'll just copy and paste it into the description down below the video and then I'm gonna go ahead and save it and then of course I'm gonna have to do a restart 
Now, of course, I could have stopped and started Nemo in the terminal, but I just wanted to make this as easy as possible. And then lastly, number 10 is setting up a backup for your system. If I go to the Start button and type in Time, you'll notice Time Shift right here. Click on that. It'll ask for your password. And then it opens up your backup program. Now what this does, this allows you to take a snapshot of your main operating system and then save it wherever you choose. So to do this really quickly, um, I'm not going to go in too much detail, but you want to go ahead and hit settings and then select the snapshot type. I use uh, rsync and then location. It's going to ask you where you want it, uh, preferably to move it onto a separate drive. Um, I've got two drives on here. I usually put it onto my first one, which is my storage drive. And then schedule. Uh, this will do uh, daily backup, weekly, monthly. I don't do daily. I just do a weekly, and I only keep two. And that'll keep two copies, basically, of each backup. And then users. Uh, here we've got... I, the, the strange thing about this is exclude all files in my home directory and my root. That pretty much just takes care of... I mean, it's hardly going to back up anything. I want to include my, my personal... Uh, folder because this is where my documents, my videos, my pictures, everything are located on the main drive. So I want to include all those files. I don't necessarily have to include root, but I do anyways. I back up everything and because it's not that big. And so when I'm, you know, when, if I have to do a restore, I can just restore everything right from here. And then filters and miscellaneous, I don't worry about that. This is, you know, where you can change the, the date format. And then click OK. And then if you want to do one right away, just hit Create, and that'll, that'll create a, a snapshot for you right away. If not, it'll just go ahead and create one right here, weekly. So there's the 10 things that I do after a fresh install of Linux Mint.